ho, ho, hello, and welcome to a very special holiday edition of the Poker Brief. It's nearly the end of 2017, and uh, yeah, what a year it's been. I mean, really, 2017, right? Woo! So for this edition of The Brief, let's take a look back, not just on the month of December, but the constantly shifting landscape of poker for 2017 as a whole. The good news, poker has been moving forward. There's a lot to celebrate in terms of progress and new investments. So here are our top five topics that mattered in 2017. First up, the expanding horizons of online poker. In the U.S., there are now four states that have legalized online poker. Pennsylvania has just this November joined Nevada, New Jersey, and Delaware in that. And the effects should be seen by people in Pennsylvania early in 2018. It has seemed a painfully slow process at times for players in the U.S. who pre-Black Friday were able to play on dot-com sites with much of the rest of the world. but there is progress. A lot of really great news reporting and information in this area has been gathered and reported by the folks at OnlinePokerReport.com. Also, very much worth a follow on Twitter if you're trying to stay current on poker's legislative news. Pennsylvania wasn't the only area to announce they'd be reopening for new business. Across the pond in the regulated markets of Europe, there have been stirrings as well. It was announced this year that Italy, France, Portugal, and Spain would begin sharing online players in order to create one much larger and, let's be honest, far more viable player pool. The launch of this was planned for early 2018, but there have been recent worries that Italy will not be ready to join that early. Italy was meant to have called for license applications in mid-2017, but that didn't happen, which has obviously slowed them down. According to Casino Daily News, France and Spain might just get their player pools merged on schedule in early 2018, with Portugal shortly to follow as soon as they're able, leaving Italy to play catch up and join in once their delays in regulation are no more. So it's good news for players from France, Spain and Portugal with likely slightly annoying news for Italian players who are probably used to this kind of heavy bureaucracy. Still, this is a big leap forward towards an EU player pool that can sustain a lot more play than the smaller, regulated and closed markets were able to do on their own. One of the big changes that came in 2017 was related to how we watch poker on our screens. This includes where we watch, what we get to see, and the re-emergence of cult classic show Poker After Dark, which finally came back along with new content, thanks to Poker Central. The brainchild of businessman and poker player Kerry Katz has changed the way we view our game. With many of the large investments by online poker giants going away after Black Friday, a lot of our poker TV did as well. So the big investment that Poker Central have made to create a streaming service that is our Netflix for poker programming is crucial in bringing fresh new content to our screens. When they announced that they'd be moving to a subscription model for payment, well, there were quite a few voices who spoke up to say that they liked their poker viewing like they liked pretty much everything else, I guess. Free. But wanting something for nothing is very 2016. The truth is, new shows can't be made without money to pay for the crew, the equipment, the production costs. I mean, camera people need to eat too, right? Poker Central also signed a deal with the World Series of Poker to provide more live coverage right from the start of the main event, while still keeping the ESPN coverage intact. There was live streaming of play from day 1A, with the coverage periodically switching over to ESPN or ESPN2 to fit its time slot. Another big change for the World Series and its coverage was the end of the November 9. The main event completed the entire tournament, including final table, during the summer session. And that's how it will continue to be moving forward. It was the first time in nine years that we had our last nine players roll into the final table with no more than a couple of days to catch their breath. No more three months of coaches, trainings, simulations. The whole final played out live on ESPN and being there on set, it felt both like going back to the old days and moving forward. It was pretty cool and I liked it. Although, I mean, selfishly, I'm gonna miss my November trips to Las Vegas. Huh. For our next topic, let's take a look at 888 Poker as big changes happened with one of the industry leaders. 
among other things. Action clocks were added to the live tournament tables starting at 8 at 8 Live in London earlier this year. And it was all an effort to get rid of that total buzzkill of painfully slow games and chronically slow players. They launched the Floppomania game online as well, plus the 8 at 8 ambassadors saw a lot of success on the felt. Okay, not all of us, but... You know, Dominic Nietzsche won his fourth career World Series bracelet at the World Series in Europe by taking down, oh, you know, only the high roller for one drop with a more than $4 million top prize. Chris Moorman, an online legend, released his second book. Plus, he took his first World Series bracelet in the 3K six-handed No Limit Hold'em event this summer. Now, as well as the established 8 at 8 ambassador team doing well, the winners of both the World Series of Poker main event and the World Series of Poker Europe main event Scott Blumstein and Marty Rocker, respectively. Well, they both lifted their championship bracelets while wearing, you guessed it, an 8 at 8 patch. And Christoph Vogelsang snagged the prestigious Super High Roller Bowl title in the same patch. So apparently, it's pretty lucky, and not just for the huge events. Friend of 8 at 8 Poker and Brazilian Poker Pro Vivian Saliba knows. She took down 888 Live London Ladies event, which included a package to the main event of the World Series of Poker Europe in the Czech Republic. While she was there, 888, they announced that Vivian was joining our team as an official ambassador. So she joins the awesome Parker Tonka Talbot as a 2017 signing, both players filling out a really great roster. Keep an eye on the company in 2018 as there will be more great 888 Live destinations and the year will start with an 888 poker sponsored WPT Deep Stacks in Berlin. And of course, you'll have the option to qualify for the World Series of Poker main event online at 888 Poker once again. Our next big topic in this 2017 roundup is, wait, I think it had something to do with the World Series this summer as well, but it's kind of hard to remember because it seemed like all anyone could talk about at the time was cryptocurrencies in general and Bitcoin in particular. So it was the summer of crypto for poker, and it's not really let up since then, as poker pro and funny man Sam Grafton pointed out in not just one, but two of our tweets of the year. I've seen it said that poker players have been one of the biggest adopter groups for crypto in 2017, and given how much chat there is about blockchain technology and the pros and cons of various alts at the table, all the different poker streamers now talking about the subject, the different crypto-based online poker sites popping up, and the pretty much constant chatter about the price of Bitcoin on Twitter, both by those who hold and hold not. It was definitely the talk of the year. I'll be curious to see the effect on poker if crypto tanks in 2018, and by curious I mean, oh please, don't let that happen. Honestly, I don't think I could bear to see it. And our last, but in no way least, topic of note for 2017 shows that profits and dollars aren't the only thing players think about. Poker players proved, yet again, that charitability isn't just a fad. On the corporate side of things, nearly a million euros was raised during the big one for one drop high roller in Rosvedov during the World Series of Poker Europe. And on the personal side, well, poker players continued to raise money for worthy causes, with many of them applying the principles of effective altruism, often through the poker-based reg charity. Dan Smith is again teaming up with the Crowley Brothers for an end of 2017 charity drive, after raising over $1.7 million last year for charities. This year, they're hoping to match up to a million dollars towards 10 great charities, and you can find all the details on his blog. There was also an outpouring on poker Twitter of people looking to bring aid to those affected by multiple natural disasters that struck the Americas and beyond this fall. The poker clothing brand Run Good Gear donated 100% of their sales from between August 29th and September 5th to the local Hurricane Harvey Relief Fund set up by the mayor of Houston. One of their ambassadors, poker pro Ray Henson, a longtime Houston resident, well, he was lucky to escape with little damage to his own home. But not willing to just sit back and count his lucky stars, he took to a small motorboat to lend help with evacuations and deliver supplies to neighborhoods that hadn't been as lucky as he'd been. He was also on social media as well, urging people to donate what they could to help those who'd been displaced by the hurricane, including highlighting poker pro Gavin Smith, who was collecting donations in his garage, and who was assembling a team to distribute the goods to shelters so that they reached the people who really needed them. 
WPT anchor Lynn Gilbarton lives in both the United States and in Mexico with her longtime partner Angel Guillen. They were lucky to escape much of the damage of the devastating earthquake that hit Mexico. But with so many people so badly affected, the Mexican poker community sprang into action, led by Alfredo Delgado, whose house quickly became a huge donations processing center. Friends and strangers showed up from all over with donations, with cars for deliveries, and people sent money so they could buy supplies, medicine, and equipment directly from wholesalers. They ended up coordinating with a Mexican rescue organization and worked directly with them. In the immediate aftermath, Lynn Gilmartin was at her WPT anchor desk at the Borgata Poker Open, taking donations between camera takes, while Angel and many other players were in Mexico buying supplies with the money as it came in and delivering it to where it needed to go. And it wasn't just about the immediate disaster response. They also put together an action plan to help with rebuilding, including having experts teaching people how to rebuild sustainable, disaster-resistant housing. They have a permaculture farm in Mexico where they're running workshops on building using something called super adobe, which is a sandbag method that resists hurricanes and earthquakes. They're teaching communities to rebuild sustainably, and they're going to use the rest of the money that was donated for that rebuilding. Over $45,000 has been raised so far, with 13,000 of that coming from people sponsoring Matt Savage to burn his much maligned cranberry suit. And they've also set up a website at MexicoFuerte.org for more information. And that feels like a really positive note on which to end this wrap up of 2017. So I'm gonna stop it there, where we can all remember how big an impact individuals can have when they care about people and when they turn that desire to help into action. Let's take this forward into 2018. Have a fantastic holiday season, whatever you're celebrating. I hope you get a lot more than a lump of coal in your stocking. This has been The Poker Brief. I'm Kara Scott, and I'll see you next year.